Hey everyone, how are you guys doing today? The name is Josh if you were wondering how to pronounce it. This video involves heavy topics such as depression, suicide, and sexual abuse. If you are sensitive to these topics, I suggest to stop watching this right now. Anyways, if you're still here, I hope you enjoy the video. 2020 is here, and most of Konami's franchises are dead in the water. The Metal Gear franchise, directed by the creative mind of Hideo Kojima, died in 2017 when Metal Gear Survive, a game about multiplayer and zombies, failed miserably and made no fucking sense whatsoever. The last time I've ever heard how Contra was doing was forever ago. When the hell was the last time a Castlevania game was released? All of these franchises that held very much potential and then wasted was Konami's fault without a doubt. One blue ball of a franchise we could also take a look at developed by Konami is the Silent Hill franchise. If you don't know what Silent Hill is, Silent Hill is a survival horror and psychological horror game franchise that was very popular in the 2000s era. The effects after playing Silent Hill can make you feel uneasy, paranoid, and also make you question what life is. The grueling atmosphere along with the amazing soundtracks composed by Akira Yamaoka can make you feel empty at first, then feel dread the next. Originally, Silent Hill 1 through 4 was created and developed by Team Silent, a team that worked for Konami for 9 years. After Team Silent was defunct in 2005 to work on games like the Siren franchise, the Silent Hill games became way shittier and eventually died after Book of Memories was released for the PSP. With Kojima attempting to resurrect the series in 2015 with the cryptic playable teaser, also known as PT, which would become known as the Silent Hills demo. Unfortunately, Silent Hills was cancelled along with the franchise to never be heard from again. Arguably, the last good Silent Hill game could be known as the Silent Hill 4, The Room, which was the last game Team Silent ever worked on. Now, you might be asking yourself, why does this involve Silent Hill 2, and also, why does this matter? Silent Hill matters because it was one of the first survival horror games that redefined the horror genre as we now know today. And this involves Silent Hill 2 because Silent Hill 2 is the reason why. Silent Hill 2 was released September 24th in 2001. The making of the game took two years after Silent Hill was released for the Sony PlayStation, which was a huge success for Konami. Most noteworthy inspirations from the game include artist Rembrandt and Andrew Wyeth works. Atmospherically, film directors like David Cronenberg, David Fincher, and David Lynch, along with Alfred Hitchcock, helped with themes from the game. Additionally, the narrative is inspired by the Russian novel Crime and Punishment. Silent Hill 2 received critical appraise and is considered to be one of the greatest works of art in the survival horror video game medium. By the way, one quick mention, this game has way too much stuff to talk about, including countless theories online. Sadly, since I'm not good at over analysis videos, I will not talk about everything that happens in the game like I originally planned to, but that's okay. The version I am playing on is the Enhanced Edition, the mod for the PC. However, if you want to play this bad boy later, I do not recommend the HD collection, including 3, because of A, bad fog, and B, constant crashes. Now that we have the introduction out of the way, let's dive into the madness Silent Hill 2 has created. The story starts out with James Sunderland being brought back to Silent Hill. In my restless dreams, I see that town. Silent Hill. You promised you'd take me there again someday. After he receives a letter from his wife, Mary, who died three years ago. The letter says that Mary is in their special place in Silent Hill waiting for him. The quest for James is to find Mary, and James will not stop looking for Mary until he finds her. While James is on the search for Mary, a dense fog covers Silent Hill. You can barely see anything 15 years away. He meets people along the way as well. He meets Angela, a woman who is looking for her mother. Some things to mention about her is that she apologizes frequently to James, stutters sometimes, and has constant mood swings. Eddie, a man who defends himself in the first time, 
he sees James after James witnesses a dead body in a kitchen when Eddie is in the bathroom. Maria, who has the same features as Mary, including her voice and face, but doesn't have a purpose for why she's in Silent Hill. She also is a companion for a fifth of the game. Laura is an eight-year-old orphan who does not like James and is also looking for Mary. The last one James encounters is known as Pyramid Head. He stalks James in almost each area he goes to. He's foreshadowed when James reads an article about Walter Sullivan, a serial killer who committed suicide in prison after being convicted for the murders of Billy and Miriam Locaine. Before Walter was found guilty, however, he blurted out saying, He's trying to kill me. He's trying to punish me. The monster. The red devil. Forgive me. I did it, but it wasn't me. The last thing, or things, James encounters are the monsters that are in the town. In Silent Hill 1, the monsters are different compared to 2. Silent Hill 1 monsters reflected the fears of Alessa Gillespie, who was the main antagonist in 1. All of the monsters in 2 look humanoid and show a sign of femininity. For right now, let's talk about something else, however. Along the search, James goes through areas to bypass locked gates or passageways. The apartments, hospital, prison, labyrinth, and hotel make you go through claustrophobic hallways. Darkness replaces the fog for inside areas. The vacant, desecrated walls, including James being isolated and only having a few minor interactions with major characters in the dark and abandoned locations. There are also a lot of unexplained moments in the game, such as the infamous, there was a hole, it's gone now, message at Neely's bar, or a body being identical to other bodies in separate areas. They always have the same hair, but different clothes. We've seen this model before because it's James. Everything in Silent Hill has a purpose, or some type of lore behind it. Later in the game, the interaction with the characters become more disturbing. For instance, the second time you see Angela, she's laying down next to a mirror, holding a knife, contemplating suicide. During the conversation, James asks if he can have the knife. James tries to grab the knife from her when Angela screams and then leaves the knife with him. While being alone, after Maria decided to stay and rest for a little bit, Laura tells James how she knows Mary, and then this happens. Why can't you just tell me? You gonna yell at me if I don't? No, I won't. I was friends with Mary. We met at the hospital. It was last year. You liar! Laura, I... Fine, don't believe me. But last year, Mary was already... Instantly, James is apologetic, his personality becoming bitter and bitter while the story unfolds. After Maria dies by Pyramid Head, the narrative and perspective changes. James finds himself in the Silent Hill Historical Society and later discovers a hole. With no other way out, James is forced to jump down. After completing a puzzle, James opens a passageway to yet another hole he will have to jump into. James lands at the prison with Eddie next to another dead person. This time, however, Eddie's personality changes from defendant to a psychopath. Killing a person ain't no big deal. Just put the gun to their head, pow. James then jumps down three more holes, additionally descending in an elevator further into the earth revealing the madness James is descending into. We've only had a glimpse of James' flaws until now. James is now in the area known as the Labyrinth, a maze where the player discovers the truth, discovering why James, Eddie, and Angela are all in Silent Hill. James first encounters Maria in a cell alive. James asks how Maria is still alive, and Maria is confused by this question. James, honey, did something happen to you? After we got separated in that long hallway? Are you confusing me with someone else? <laughs> you were always so forgetful. Remember that time in the hotel? Maria? You said you took everything. 
but she forgot that videotape we made. I wonder if it's still there. How do you know about that? Aren't you Maria? I'm not your Mary. So, you're Maria? I am. If you want me to be. All I want from you is an answer. It doesn't matter who I am. I'm here for you, James. See? I'm real. Maria flirts with James. James is scared at first, but decides to go to the opposite side of the cell. James finds an article about Thomas Orozco, Angela's father, who had his throat slit by Angela, later revealed in the next room. Please, Daddy! Please don't! Angela is cowering in a corner while a grotesque, monstrous form of her father, also known as Abstract Daddy, is approaching her closer and closer. The room also displays holes with pistons in a thrusting motion. After fighting the father, we find out that Angela was sexually abused and raped by her father. Angela's mental health shifted because of her father and no one in her family stopped the abuse. An interesting piece of dialogue. You said your wife Mary was dead, right? Yes. She was ill. Liar! I know about you. You didn't want her around anymore. You probably found someone else. <sighs> That's ridiculous. I never... After James does a puzzle about freeing the innocent man, James goes into Maria's cell to see her dead on the bed and I think it's finally time to discuss who or what Maria really is. Maria is a manifestation created by James Lust. Her design is intended to look more sexual and basically the perfect form of Mary. On the topic, the monsters are also manifested by James, Eddie, and Angela. James' monsters are humanoid and have a sexual quality to them, such as the bubblehead nurses in the hospital, the mannequin which is just legs over legs here in first night apartments, Eddie's manifestation is the entire town laughing at him because of his insecurities, Angela's manifestation is of the town being engulfed by flames, feeling guilty for killing her father in self-defense. After finding Maria dead, James leaves the labyrinth and discovers a graveyard with a hole in a tombstone. Additionally, the tombstone being marked as James Sunderland. Next to it are two other graves, Eddie and Angela, with their holes sealed, symbolizing their fate has been sealed. To the right, however, another grave is readable, reading Walter Sullivan. James jumps down the hole and sees blood covering all over the walls at the end of the hallway before he finds Eddie in a meat locker. Eddie at this point has lost it. He's killed people and eventually admits to killing a dog and ran away to Silent Hill. James has no other choice to kill him, sealing the fate of Eddie Dombrowski. Eddie? Eddie? I... I killed a... a human being. A human being. Mary. Did you really die three years ago? Before he dies, the last time Eddie interacts with James, he talks about how this town called him too, how they're the same person, foreshadowing what James really is. Interacting with the other characters, you will notice how almost everyone calls out James that he hated his wife. You didn't love Mary anyway. Wait! How do you know Mary's name? I look like Mary, don't I? You loved her, right? Huh. Or maybe you hated her. Don't be ridiculous. James finds the hotel and sees Laura. Laura is more friendly this time and lets him see the letter Mary gave to her. The letter is a farewell to Laura at the hospital. At the end, however, the ending of the letter says, 
Happy 8th birthday, Laura. Laura, how old are you? Um, I turned 8 last week. So, Mary couldn't have died three years ago. Are you taping again? Come on. I don't know why, but I just love it here. It's so peaceful. You know what I heard? This whole area used to be a sacred place. I think I can see why. It's too bad we have to leave. Please promise you'll take me again, James. <laughs> James murdered Mary when she fell ill to enter misery and pain. Pyramid Head is symbolism for the guilt James has endured after Mary and Eddie's death. I needed someone to punish me for my sins. Before the final boss fight, there's a long hallway where a flashback tells us what Mary was like. Mary? What do you want, James? I, uh, I brought you some flowers. Flowers? want any damn flowers. Just go home already. Mary, what are you saying? Look, I'm disgusting. I don't deserve flowers. Between the disease and the drugs, I look like a monster. Well, what are you looking at? Get the hell out of here! James finds Mary at the top of the hotel. However, it's not Mary. It's Maria again making Maria the true antagonist of the entire game. James says he doesn't need her anymore and kills her. The second to last scene shows how complicated James really is. He says he kills Mary because she told him to, but at the same time, he also killed her because she didn't really say that. He hated her in many ways and wanted his life back. He was mentally abused by Mary. He had sexual desires. He's one of the, if not, the most complex character in the Silent Hill franchise. In the first game, we play as a hero, escaping the occult, escaping from Silent Hill. In Silent Hill 2, we play as a confused man, escaping his psyche and freeing himself from Silent Hill. <laughs>